welcome to the counter offer which eric brings two articles i bring two articles he doesn't know my articles he doesn't i don't know his articles and we discuss <laughs> the real estate news the way it should be discussed as objectively as possible even off though the cuff. even though we're a little subjective about the news i'll start it off Everyone is talking about the, it's very interesting too, before I bring in the article that almost seven in 10 metro areas posted home price gains in the first quarter of 2023. Before I get into that, two people, before I was leaving the building to go to an open house yesterday, talked about the recession. And then when I was at the open house, I heard the same R word. So recession, which I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know what news organizations are pushing this, but the data is different. Single family, single family existing home prices climbed approximately 70% of the metro areas. So 70% of the metro areas, home prices went up in the first quarter. It didn't go up a lot, but everyone's talking about the pricing is going down. Now let's talk about the, about one in 14 markets. So that's two, this is by National Association of Realtors, which is NAR. And out of the 221, so one in 14 homes actually posted double digit annual price appreciations. Okay, that's a lot. So almost 20% of the homes posted double digits. And it's interesting hearing people what they say, but then what's in reality. You know, it's very interesting people. The pricing is still going up, or at least it's not going down in 70% of the markets. So what's your thoughts on that, on what people say and what the actual data is? I'm surprised. 221 markets too, that's a lot, you know? And National Association Realtors, they have a huge scope. This isn't, you know, it's not just say New York City and LA, 221, like we're going smaller cities too. You know, maybe like Syracuse is in there you know, or Albany or things like that. So if you really think about it, probably DC is going up, all of Florida is going up, Texas is going up, um, a lot of the Midwest is going up. And, you know, even outside here in the tri-state area, they're going up. So uh, it's a very interesting article that I ran across that I don't know if you have any other thoughts. <laughs> no, I'd love to read that article. Uh, definitely a lot of markets that are still very hot. And <clears throat> sellers that want to sell from many many years ago most likely so well yeah and, and the last thing i'll say to this the reason i it was interesting is because i'm hearing people that are actually in the market to buy or in the market to rent saying that it's a bad market and then i run across the article and i'm like well actually the data and this is a huge 221 metro areas like that's a huge slice of the market you know that's that's probably almost 95% of the population lives in those maybe, maybe that is, you know, where a lot of buyers are still feeling like they have to pay up, you know, and maybe that is why there's some hesitation in the market. But when you see something that you like, you're, you know, still thinking that the price is high. Yeah. You're like, wow, to get what I want, I still have to pay a lot of money. Yep. And they want those prices to come down a bit, but then they see if it's in their budget, what you get. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they're like, oh, this is what I really want. Oh, it's more expensive. It's just like any sort of shopping. Yeah. Uh, okay, I can't decide which great article I should start with. But Go with the most positive. Uh, both of them are very positive. All right. I'm not bringing in any negative articles. Nothing no, in this no office negative. No commercial real estate. No, <laughs> none of that stuff. No recession. No nothing. <laughs> NYC's housing market gets a boost from cash buyers five days ago. As per the analysis by a recent citywide sales data by The Real Deal, all cash deals are making up a large portion of the New York City housing market than any other time on record. Wow. In fact, cash buyers accounted for 60% of condo sales in Manhattan this year alone. The trend is not limited to Manhattan, as cash purchases made up 37% of condo deals in Brooklyn and 40% of deals in Queens, wow. both record highs since at least 2018. Wow. So uh, why are there less cash deals or lower amount, but still higher, relatively speaking, in uh, Brooklyn and Queens is because they have lower monthlies, lower real estate taxes, yeah. lower common charges for the building. 
So when you start coming into Manhattan, you get these expensive uh, common charges on the building, expensive real estate taxes, and then all of a sudden the monthly expenses uh, with a mortgage are very, very high. So cash buyers come out. Yeah, I would say the one thing behind this is that I, I just look at there are so many people with so much money that's doing nothing. <laughs> that's the way that I look at it. I was talking to this guy yesterday and he's like, I've been looking to buy, but his rent, and you just said it earlier today, is month to month. So there is no incentive for him to buy, but he is a cash buyer potentially. So there, I, I believe there's so many people that are currently renting that are sitting on a pile of cash. They don't know if they're gonna stay in New York City. They don't know if they're gonna move outside of New York City. They don't know if they're gonna take a hiatus, but I think there's a lot more money in the market than people are you know, talking about. And you know, cash, clearly with these rates, makes sense. That's true. You and know? a lot of people are uh, value the flexibility. And yeah. that's why they rent. Yeah. Talking about uh, your favorite topic, commercial buildings. No. This is very interesting. Okay. Oh, no, is it now? Yes. The title, Why Wealthy Families Are Snapping Up New York City's Empty Office Buildings. Yeah, I saw that one. Oh, I you did? passed on it. Yeah, you passed. Okay. <laughs> but I'm Was glad it from the Rob Report? <laughs> I'm glad you could bring it up. Well, it's interesting, too, because what they it's talked funny, about... It's funny, because I actually ended up getting one from the Rob Report, too. <laughs> okay. So you'll see how much never better mine Rob is. <laughs> yeah, please, down below, talk about how much better my article is than this guy's. <laughs> Ironically enough, it, so 11 buildings sold in the last six months by big big institutional investors. So you're talking about large banks, large funds, say BlackRock, uh, Blackstone, I'm sorry. And only half were to big institutional investors. The rest were actually to families that are pooling their money together. What was the news that we talked about last week? They are limiting the cash out. Yeah. So what are wealthy families doing? Buying it themselves. They Exactly. And they pooled together, listen to this, in November, a, a group of family-run businesses, so these are very wealthy individuals, pooled together in November to buy up 1336th Avenue from Blackstone. How funny is that? How ironically is that? They're buying buildings, and they bought it for $320 million. Okay? So this isn't like $320 million, which is $80 million less than what they paid for in 2010. So think of that, $80 million less. So where what they're gonna do with it, I don't know, but it's very interesting. These wealthy families are not going to these companies and I, I wonder why they can't buy, they can't cash out. So now the Blackstones are going to the teachers unions. So now it's all making sense, like why would they go to teachers unions because the wealthy families are pooling together their own funds. Yeah. Smart. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's Following a pretty good that. discount. But, uh, you know, Blackstone probably wanted to take the loss and, you know. Yeah, they're, they're off, dumping. Offset it. They're dumping. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Rob report here as well. How NYC's West 11th Street is becoming the city's new billionaire's row. It's right near me. Oh. Yeah. You live on Billionaire's Row, eh? I, get, I can get some vibes. <laughs> uh, it's true. Very true. Uh, 11th Street is one of the most desirable streets in Greenwich Village. It is like walking on the Gold Coast. It's like walking down the Malibu Beach, where you see all these amazing townhouses, usually empty because they're owned by billionaires, that have completely renovated it and will pay whatever it costs to get what they want. So. I would say there's actually probably not too many left that you could buy uh, original with the original details on 11th Street. I think Sean Parker has like three townhouses in a row. Yeah, uh, they that he shut down Jessica the whole Parker street. bought two. Yeah, yeah right no, on that's there. and they renovated. They work with the Landmark Commission and everything like that. So. It's they write nice. a lot of checks. Yeah, well, definitely. <laughs> it's nice that you have to have be a billionaire to be going yeah. there and you know it is interesting because billionaires row up here is a bunch of big apartments yeah uh but those are kind of like where foreign money goes you know and like parts LLCs. their money and yeah, yeah buy it in an Trusts. llc whereas these are like real people real new yorkers real billionaires who want the like 
prime piece of property. Yeah. A house to themselves, no building, <laughs> their own place, perfect location. They make it exactly how they want. They spend all this money and then they still have these like original details. So that's one of the nicest parts about walking down on 11th Street is that you see like, wow, this is authentic. Yeah. It's like the new New York. You know, that's why I like this. It's the new billionaire's row, like, but it still has that classic authentic feel. It's not one of these like super tall buildings where you're spending a billion dollars. You're doing it right there on Greenwich Village. Yeah, as much as you want to say negative things about the landmarks, it's vital to not have tall buildings in an area that would stand out and completely ruin the area. Like I could see that they did it in West Chelsea to build up the area. You throw in a bunch of condominiums. And West Village, it's very low line. You have maybe out towards the water, the Hudson. Ironically enough, as one of the news articles that I passed on, they said Tribeca was actually the priciest zip code in the city. Hmm. So it's interesting too, because 9th Street is also, I've, I bike and walk down that street all the time and it's stunning. It's stunning during Christmas, everyone puts out lights. It's stunning right now, you have all the trees. So it's, it, it I don't know. I just love walking in that area because you don't. It's it's not a tourist trap, um, and obviously it's very clean. You know, these people they pay people to make sure that the streets are clean and everything else, and it's it's good. It's good that there's people putting money into the city, whether it's a second home or primary residence. Because you talked about the primary residence on the Upper East Side that sold to an international, well, and they brought the family over. And it's really funny to think about. You know, a lot of these were actually multifamilies. So think about 100 years ago when these were built, they were built and people were crammed into these tiny yep. little apartments and there was like 20 people in these buildings and now they've turned them into like gigantic single family homes. Added on stories yep. to it, yep. yep. huge and, backyards. And the inside is like good modern feel, but they really do a great job of keeping the authentic like New York landmark uh, attributes. Yeah, there's a person we've been reaching out, he's putting it up for rent on Christopher Street and it's stunning what he did to the interior. He's renting it out or wants to rent it out for 21,000. And it's just old details, but modernized. And how about the one on Charles Street? If you're looking oh, to yeah. invest, yeah. cash deals over here, yep. Charles Street is a great place to put your money. Stunning place. Yeah. We go live, new episode every single Wednesday, connecting the dots finally on all of the news articles. We'll see you next week. See you next